Well, so I mean, Salloway wasn't exactly what we expected, but uh, all told, uh, first time pulling out of port in uh, in a lot of years. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, hey, what's up, everybody? It's Brian and Julie here from How We Cruise. We just got back from the Liberty of the Seas test sailing, and Julie has been editing like crazy. We've been putting videos up in the channel. Hope you've been liking those. Uh, but we wanted to take a minute to sit down, talk to you, give you a full end-to-end -end review of the whole thing uh, from start to finish. Um, all told, fun time for us. A couple hiccups for Royal Caribbean, and we're going to tell you all about it as we get into this right now. So... Thanks for uh, checking this out and Hey, what's up? Brian and Julie here. Like we said, we're going to do a full review of the uh, Liberty to Seize test selling. We were fortunate enough to be volunteers. Uh, they go out of Galveston on the uh, Liberty of the Seas on September the 17th of 2021. And um, overall, uh, how can you not have a great time on a cruise? We had a great time, obviously. But uh, wanted to talk about a couple little hiccups. But a uh, couple things we would start with. You know, obviously, we had to get from New Jersey down to uh, Galveston, a uh, port we'd never been out of before. So that required a little bit of uh, research on our part. Um Thank you to everybody who suggested uh, to go out a hobby. That was a pretty good suggestion. Unfortunately for us, coming from Jersey, um, we ended up flying into Bush. Um, just simply easier for us. And I'll tell you what, um, it worked out. You know, big I'll say decision. This. I, yeah. I think between Hobby and Bush, for us, Bush was the right choice. We would have loved to fly into Hobby. Um, but you know what? Like, you got to choose what works for you. Yeah. And yeah. what's on your timeline? And for us, it was it was Bush. Yeah. And, and if you think about some of the major cruise ports, you know, Miami, uh, Port Canaveral, New York, uh, Galveston, there are multiple airports to choose from. So you got to work choose what works for you. And you know, yeah. maybe that maybe that's a good video that we could look into. Yeah. So we could. Okay, that's we, not, that's coming up. <laughs> Stay tuned. Yeah. If uh, you haven't already. I'll put my uh, I'll put my banker's hat on, and we'll work that one out. So, yeah, right. um, but then once we got down to Galveston, um, yeah. had to pick a hotel. Always fly in the day before. That's uh, I think that's a standard cruise tip. So we flew in and we stayed at so the, much anxiety if you want to stop flying yeah. the day of. Like it just anything that can go wrong, Murphy's law may go wrong. So if you can, please, please, please mm -hmm. fly in a day early. So we 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 chose to stay at the uh, the Harbor House in Galveston, mm -hmm. which. Uh, we were very, very pleased with. I uh, can't say enough good stuff about it. Julie actually dropped a video the other day of us walking from the Harbor House to the port. Um, so if you haven't checked that out yet, uh, you should definitely check that out. It's a real time, um, super easy walk, great place to stay, great views. Uh, can't say enough good stuff about it. Again, that's a whole other thing. But Check out that video, though, of the walk from Harbor House to the port, because if you're considering going there, um, it gives you everything you need to know about how to get from Harbor House to, uh, to the port. Yeah, we'll drop a link in there for you for that. And then, um, so let's talk about actually getting on the ship. So, I mean, we were at, we had a check-in time of 1130. Um, and we got to the port a little bit before that. I think, uh, in, in Julie's other video, she said we got there at about 1121. Um, which was, uh, I think pretty good timing. And, um you know, expected a line and there was not much of a line. Now, I, I mean, this was a test cruise and uh, we know that there was uh, not a lot of people on the ship, uh, very low capacity, but I don't think we'll ever see security like that again to get on a ship. Or Never. Even. You know, we mentioned that there were a few hiccups. Um, this was, you know, we didn't notice it at the time because we were so excited, but this was possibly our the first hiccup we got onto the ship and there was you know the crew member in the yellow shirt welcome welcome we walked on and it was nobody there uh there wasn't a sign to say welcome there wasn't really any other once we got literally into from the outside to inside the ship there was nobody there wasn't you know no nope. nobody from the entertainment staff 
There was no, you know, none of the crew from like the, the captain's deck. And we walked into the ship and we we're like, there was no balloons. There was nothing, which was what we're used to. Yeah. So I was like, okay, all right, we're on the ship. Oh, we don't really see many people. We don't see anybody. So we'll go to the elevators. I guess we're going to go find our cabin. Cool. Um, um, so yeah, so again, you know, we expected to see some people. Um, they weren't there. Um, it, was, know, it was, I think I called it anticlimactic. Right. You did. That was, that was, that was my word. word. We, um, we got on the ship and we were so excited. And just stepping onto or into the ship was just slightly anticlimactic. But unlike other cruises, uh, also unlike other cruises, we, we were able to self-assist our luggage on. So we, we were able yeah, to walk on with that everything. That was great. And uh, the rooms were, you know, had been vacant for 18 months. Uh, and the very first thing that I noticed when we were in our stateroom is, like, the, the smell of how clean it was. Mm -hmm. You knew that you were walking into a stateroom that was absolutely, completely clean and sanitized. And it was a pleasant smell. It wasn't off-putting at all. But it was just like that smell of, okay, this is a clean place, mm -hmm. which, you know, was definitely something to say for the situation of being on a test cruise. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, immediately, uh, you know, you know, uh, new thing for us, uh, we, you know, the first thing we want to do is get on the ship, go take a look around, go, uh, go, go start our, start our vacation, right? Like we're the only people other than a few crew. Who were in the Royal Promenade. Mm -hmm. It was about what 12 o'clock because we got on the ship at 11.41. Yeah, it was... So it was around 12. Mm -hmm. We are the only people, no exaggeration, walking through the Royal Promenade. It was surreal. All right, so being on the Royal Promenade and being the only ones there, we, we saw the uh, we saw the boom guys and we said, Hey, you know what? Let's make sure we have our opportunity to stay connected with everybody. Let's jump down there and try and get that set up right away. Um, again, hiccup number two, uh, for some reason they could not get us connected. It looked like our names were not matched to our stateroom or something like that. So, um, they took care of it. It took them a couple hours to get it fixed, but uh, they worked it out. They figured it out. We had internet. So, so you know. overall, overall final review of the, of the boom. I mean, uh, my, I did get knocked offline a couple times. I'm not sure if that was a uh, user error or if it was their boom, but, um, we also learned that the boom works better when literally out to sea mm -hmm. when you're in port. And then they, they told us this too, yeah, that's when true. you're in port, like it's, it's spotty, it's a little hit and miss kind of drop a little bit. Um, so it's not as good when you're in port for whatever reason than when you're out to sea. So if you get a chance to check out any of our videos from the sail away, we did that with our, uh, with our, uh, with our cellular, not our, not our boom. So, yeah. all right. So we headed up top to the, uh, the sail away, uh, expected to be about four o'clock. Um, would you? Yeah, no, we got up there. It was, it was fantastic. There was the band playing. We were ready to go. We were lucky enough to hook up with, all the Facebook community that we had met um, getting ready for the sail away. And then as it kind of drug out and we kind of realized that people were not finishing their muster station and we weren't leaving. And before you know it, it's 410, 420, 450, 530. I think we finally well, left that. What? Well, I think we pulled out of port. It was, it was, it was well, it was almost six o'clock. It was before yeah. six. It was definitely it was before almost six. six. But we'll, what stood out to me was that um, the band stopped playing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was looking for somebody. The, band, the, the band was great. We loved listening to the band, but there was nothing else. Um, if you're a cruiser, correct me if you're wrong. Feel, feel, feel free to leave a comment. But if you're a cruiser, like you're used to, I don't know, an MC, somebody like kind of like giving you a little bit of something. You're out on the pool deck. Everybody's excited to leave. That's kind of what we were expecting, just because that's what we're used to. I know this was a test cruise, so maybe our expect expectations were not appropriate for what it was. But um, we would have liked to have just had a little bit of like excitement or ump. Like we said before, we got on the ship and we were like, oh, okay, we're on. 
And then we went to sail away and we're like, oh, okay. You know, we left a little late and other than a band playing, there was like nobody to say, hey, excitement. And we were so excited. So don't get us wrong. And we had a fantastic time. Um, these were just things that we noted. You know, it was what it was. All right. Well, so I mean, sail away wasn't exactly what we expected, but uh, all told, uh, first time pulling out of port in uh, in a lot of years. It was a lot of fun. So, uh, but let's oh, talk. Right. Let's talk a little bit about the food. I mean, I mean, overall, the entire cruise, the food and the wind chamber was really good. But sail away day, the food was absolutely fantastic, and um, they had lobster tail. They had. Uh, filet mignon, they had all kinds of, they had like shrimp salad and they had scallops and um, I'll try to post a picture of what we had. Um, the lobster tail was okay. I mean, it was kind of buffet level lobster tail. I personally thought mine was a little overcooked and, and it was okay, but like I could have done without it. But the filet was, I mean this, with everything in me. The best filet that I have ever had in my entire life. Um, so second night, the food was phenomenal. The formal night, dress your best. Everything was, everything was on par. Perfect. But the, uh, the third night, um, we were actually lucky enough to be able to, um, after dinner, there was an opportunity to go see the ice show uh, rehearse. And one of the things that the waiters ask us in the main dining room is, are you... Are you in any kind of a rush? Do you need to get to a show? Yeah. First thing they asked us is, are you in a rush? We said, we'd like to make the show at 8, 8.30, whatever it was. We were there about an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half before we needed to be where we wanted to be. Uh, no problem, no problem, no problem. We ordered our food. So whatever was happening that third night was really, it, it was taking longer than it usually did. Um, Waiter, again, had already said, no problem. We'll make sure you make your show. Now, now we're at like an hour, an hour and five minutes. So, you know, our waiter happens to be passing by. And so we said, you know, would you mind sending our food up to our room? We just can't wait any longer. We want to continue on our, with our night. We've been waiting here over an hour and we're ready to, you know, we're ready to go. So we were a little disappointed that our food didn't come out, didn't come out on time. Um, now our waiter did say, absolutely not a problem. They were apologetic. Yeah. And said no problem on sending the food up to the room. Um, so we did uh, leave, leave to go to the show. Um, we got some of what we ordered, but not it. all of it. Definitely not our dessert because we had already ordered that. And it just, it wasn't there and it was like, it, it was subpar. I really, really, really enjoyed. So if you are out there and you're listening and you're an ice skater, I sincerely thank you uh, for letting us in on that part of your, your job. We really, really did enjoy watching you rehearse and we appreciated it for what it was. But I think what was the coolest part of that was the fact that we learned um, that because of the quarantines with with everything, yeah. uh, a lot of the skaters and actually a lot of the crew um, had only gotten very, very limited opportunity before we boarded to, to practice, to learn their routines, to learn the menus, to learn their jobs. Um, they're all new contracts. So the, the ship had been in dry dock prior to, to prior to his boarding. Um, so, so a lot of new crew, a lot of new entertainment staff, a lot of new everybody. Um, and, and, you know, the, the fact that we were able to see a lot of this stuff pretty much from Jump Street. They talked about it as old style cruising where the people would come on board to learn their, to learn their jobs. But I will say that the staff, uh, the crew working the, the, the theater, I uh, was very attentive, and they definitely made sure that they got everybody their right. drinks before the show started. Yes, because they, they were, didn't interrupt the show. They were not allowed good. to interrupt the show. And I'm going to add to right here that the third, because it was the third and four, the fourth deck. So the third deck was vaccinated only. So once we entered the 
theater, we were allowed to remove our masks. We could order our drinks and we could leave our masks off for the entire show. Uh, the fourth floor, which, you know, if you've ever been in the theater, you know, they're kind of connected. It's all open, but they're on the upper deck. The balcony. The balcony. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Um, that was the unvaccinated area. And they had to keep their masks on during the show. And that's how they separated. So everybody could be in the theater watching the show that was being performed. However, the bottom floor, the third floor, the floor deck, third deck mm -hmm. was unvac or I'm sorry, was vaccinated. Mm -hmm. The fourth deck was unvaccinated. So <laughs> thanks to YouTube editing, I can just tell you guys that I was right. We were talking about the unvaccinated areas on the boat. There was Boleros and the Star Lounge. Those were the only two areas that we know of that were unvaccinated. <clears throat> um, people could go, you had to wear masks. Um, both very entertaining. Had The bands were playing, the, there was music playing, and it was a wonderful atmosphere. Um, but those were the two areas. Every place else was vaccinated only that we know of. So we're talking about the prom or the Royal Promenade, uh, the R bar, so pool bar. What we did notice is that even as you're moving about the ship between the vaccinated areas, uh, you do have to wear your mask yeah. in between the vaccinated areas. But once you settle down in either the Spooner Bar or the Hook and Claw or the R bar or Oliver Twist, Mm -hmm. uh, then the masks are no longer required. Um, yeah. We take them off to drink your drink and, mm -hmm. and, you know, have your, you know, socialize with your, your friends. And all, all told, not, not a bad inconvenience at all. So totally no, everything I, that we've been used to for I'll the last this, year and a half. So we're, if we're reviewing this cruise as a whole, I will say this. A, I felt very, very, very safe. I felt like they really did keep everything clean. Everything was sanitized from you know, the armchairs of the chairs that you were sitting on after you yes. stood up mm -hmm. to the, the tables that were labeled whether or not you could sit on them. And the second that you sat down, they were flipped. Uh, the tag on them, the second you stood up, they they washed them, sanitized them, and reflipped the tag that said it was okay to sit there. Um, you know, the, the bathrooms and, and just the, the pool there, every single thing. I cannot say enough how clean they were sanitized they were yeah. um everybody wore their mask nobody um gave anybody I, I at least i didn't witness anybody giving anybody a hard time no, about wearing a mask no. nobody had a hard time everybody did it everybody complied um almost to the point of like <laughs> almost the point of like overly done like we would walk through the casino and i think i, I may have said this in another video but we would, you know, enter the casino and they would say, washy, washy. And we would put the sanitizer on our hands and we would walk through the casino. And in like 100 yards, 100 meters, we would be on the other end and they'd be like, washy, washy. And we'd be like, we haven't touched a thing. We haven't picked up a thing. We haven't touched our face or our head, or our hands. And they're, you know, and we're washing again. Um, no problem in complying with that because we wanted to make sure that everybody felt that everybody was, you know, complying and safe and clean and, and germ free. But at the same time, it was almost like overly done, um, to the point where it was like, oh my gosh, like my, my poor hands yeah. like cracking and drying. But we did notice even when we were up on the pool deck, we would see, um, the, uh, the crew. Uh, wiping down all the railings and everything. Walk, everything like that. But, you know, since we're talking about, since they're different on the pool deck, let's talk about the, uh, the pool deck area, the upper, the upper part of the ship. So when we yeah. were on, when we were on the sailing, um, I, I know one of the things that you'll see whenever you watch any, any videos, uh, pre, pre pandemic, uh, videos, you hear, uh, stories about, uh, fights over chairs or, or, or people leaving towels on chairs. Pretty much multiple people have confirmed that we heard that it was 598 people. Like 598 that, yeah. passengers on a four, over 4,000 passenger ship. I could have used four chairs. <laughs> when I say, and we say, 
It was a ghost ship. It was a ghost ship. It really was. There was nobody on it. Everybody that we saw was the same people that we saw over and over again. And it was fantastic. It was an experience that we will never get again. And we are so happy to have been a part of it. So, but to that Pros end, cons. Uh, no, none of the water slides were open, so we can't give you any review of those. Um, <clears throat> Other look, than the video of what we took of them. They look, they looked fun. I would have liked to have tried them. Uh, Flow Rider, um, yeah. I've told you, you know, if they would have let me on it, I probably would have stood up on that thing for like hours, but, uh, you know, they didn't give me the opportunity. So, um, but uh, uh, what else was closed? Oh, the Splashaway Bay, which is the kids area that was closed. Uh, they were actually doing some pretty serious renovations on that. Uh, we've seen some pictures and videos. They worked on it the whole time we were yes. there. Yes, yeah. uh, we've seen some pictures and videos. We were trying to get this video up before the first uh, revenue sailing went out, uh, but um, we didn't. So, uh, but we did. So we did see that looks like it is running now, but it was not running on the test sailing. Um, some other things that were up. We we did notice a lot of maintenance issues up uh, on on the pool decky area, up especially by Adventure Ocean. Where a lot of the kids club stuff was there were some signs that were missing uh some of the some of the letters uh there were some just some general I maintenance say, like, things general maintenance things that i was a little disappointed in just going on the cruise you know brian gave me a little bit of a hard time he thought i was a little overcritical hopefully uh hopefully yeah. they've uh, taken care of those things by I, that. I imagine um, that they probably are and they have the crew is fantastic we love royal caribbean we love them so this is, we're not being overly critical in, in noticing these things, but we did notice them. But let's talk quick about a couple of the policy things that are going yeah. on right okay. now. So um, we did make a little bit of an error when we first walked up to the Sky Bar and uh, we sat down. Oh. There, well, there were bar stools. I'm so, so sorry, Dennis. <laughs> yeah, I feel so bad about we this. We sat down at the bar stool and there were, there were markers saying uh, that this area is reserved. So we assumed... <laughs> With social distancing, six feet, two meters, whatever, you know. It said, the sign said this area. <laughs> the way it was placed, at, we thought that, like, every other seat at the bar yeah. and pool bar was closed. So, to be clear, it's all the seats at the bar on the pool were bar. closed. Were closed. <laughs> so, we thought it was every other one, yeah. and we sat down, and... And, and the bartender tried to tell us, I'm sorry, you can't sit there. And we're like, but we're in the so, same cabin. We so, can sit next to each other. So we moved over. I, felt, Oops, I feel really yeah, bad. No. Well, so we, we learned <laughs> something. And hopefully our We were not being difficult. We really <laughs> did misunderstand. Hopefully our so, And that wasn't on the bartender at no, all either. No, that no, was no, another no. thing that we, again, that's not a royal group. So, that's just like a, how do you, how do you convey to your customers that, you know, whatever. I don't know. Do you put big yellow caution big tape on the seats? Not. Probably not because that would be off-putting as but, well. Uh, but also let's talk about the uh, one of the things that we learned about from the – so we're also <laughs> a part of the, the Facebook group for the Oasis and the Seas Test Sailing. Uh, based yeah. on the fact that we're in New Jersey, we really thought we were going to be on that ship. We ended up on this ship. So um, one of the okay. complaints from the Oasis Sailing was the capacities of the pool. And we were curious to see what was going to happen when we yeah. got on board on Liberty. I was really excited to see the difference mm -hmm. because Oasis of the Seas test cruise, you know, that seemed to be what we perceived one of the bigger complaints on the Facebook page is, you know, what it's, they just weren't allowing people in the boat. More, I think it was more than seven people right. on that cruise. So on our sailing, they were not allowing more than six people mm -hmm. in a Pool or four people in a hot tub and i kind of feel like that was sporadically enforced um the there were times that day. if there were people sitting on the side with their feet in the pool uh the lifeguards were saying that counted and then there were other times that we were sitting up on our chairs by the pool and i would definitely count well over eight people in a hot tub so i you know I hope that that's something that Royal Caribbean yeah. can work out because that's, um, you know, as, as yeah. the capacities increase. On we the also heard ships, like um, inconsistencies on people trying to get in the pool and the lifeguard saying, no, 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 I'm sorry, you can't. And kicking them out, the person trying to get in and letting everybody else stay versus like there was all, we also saw the, the other end where 
somebody tried to get in the pool and they tried to just tell somebody else that was already in they had to leave and you know nobody got overly upset no. there was never any major issues we saw everybody tried to work the best to work with each other but at the same time it was very convoluted it was very inconsistent and and somewhat confusing so the best advice that i could offer there is just be a good human being we work together with people and we talk to the lifeguards and we and we talk to the other passengers and you know we didn't seem to have a problem uh so anybody that has that kind of issue we encourage you talk to the lifeguard talk to the other passengers make friends and and you know what we're all here just to get back to cruising and um you know that that would be our our best advice that we could offer on that it's just just be a good human being so ultimately you know good stuff up at the pool couple hiccups couple hiccups throughout the sh throughout the week but uh, all in all um good vacation for us um i don't i hope looks like real caribbean passed their test sailing um it looks like they got a couple of things they gotta gotta work out and i hope they do and well, they have to have passed with priority like out do. on revenue sailing yeah absolutely um, so you know that's the point like we went on a test sailing and we were waiting to give her feedback and we didn't receive our questionnaire um survey right. so, whatever you want until after the revenue sailing went out and we were kind of like well what was our purpose of being there if we can't provide some feedback I believe I mean, we were told we were going to get a survey within two to three days after we disembarked um and we never received it and you know there was some communication in the facebook group has anybody received the survey and uh at one point i actually reached out and and i will give props to royal caribbean through their facebook page they are very very responsive to their facebook messenger if you need to get a hold of royal caribbean oh, yeah I mean, I, I get, any for World Caribbean as a whole. Yeah, if you absolutely. need to reach them, Facebook message them. Yeah, absolutely. they will respond within minutes. Yeah, and so they responded. They're on top of it, and, and we told them we never received a survey, and it wasn't just that too; it was, it was other things too. Right. But anyway, but, yeah. But specifically related to that, you know, we reached out to them via that uh, via that messenger, and uh, it was the next day. Um, granted, it was after the first revenue sailing had already gone out. Uh, we received a very in-depth, uh, or an email with a very in-depth survey, um, you know, which we filled out, which includes all the points we brought up here. Uh, but the last point that we didn't really bring up yet that I want to talk about, which was kind of a big deal, is the uh, the disembarkation process, which um, if, you've, if you're if you used to cruising, um, you know that the disembarkation process previously was put your luggage outside your room the night before, and then as soon as you wake up in the morning, you get out of your room and you go to whatever area, whether that be a lounge or a theater or, or wherever your area is assigned to be. Now, the new process is you you sit in your room and you watch the TV screen for your, your disembarkation group to be called. And uh, we received on, I believe it was the second day we were there, um, a, a, a QR code that we had to scan to say when we needed to leave the ship based on what our flight was. We had a, like a noon flight. So we sh we thought we had plenty of time mm -hmm. to get off the ship and get up there. Based on our previous experiences, but uh, this is a new world that we have to get used to. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit of a tight crunch. So we asked for an earlier disembarkation. We, we got the advice from the, uh, uh, from guest services that, you know, uh, make sure that you don't miss your flight. So we uh, we disembarked as we needed to disembark in order to make our flight, and we took care of that. We uh, were advised to disembark just at our own time. <laughs> which, I got to tell you, like it was unnerving for us because we were breaking the rules. We don't like what. to break the rules. We don't. We don't. We want to follow all the rules. Yeah. And when but we, we also tried to, to go down when it wasn't our time, yeah. it was like, ooh, you know, we did feel a little bit of funny. That, that said, said, there were no problems. No problems. Off the ship, we no can get right off. Issue. It was, we got uh, right off the ship. No problems. Uh, the only problem that we oh, did we run into. We weren't supposed to. 
the only problem that we did run into um, is once we did get off the ship. But once we did get off the ship, um, now, oh, not all of on. you... Customs? Oh my God, amazing. Could not like, have been easier. Couldn't, the whole thing, the whole process of getting, other than we were a little nervous about getting off the, time, the ship when it wasn't our time, we walked right off the ship. We, customs, you know, deembarkation, like all of it, like we just walked right off the ship. And all of a sudden, we're outside, and we're like, that's it? The, like, the, the it took as, probably three minutes to get off the ship. As we explained earlier, getting onto the ship was super easy, and getting off the ship was even easier. Um, but that left us in a parking lot where... Right. Um, so we walked now, across the parking lot to get an Uber. Well... Or a Lyft. So we learned a couple things. And, um, <clears throat> you know, again, we know we're a relatively new channel, and most of you are still just meeting us, but... Uh, as, as you get to see more and more of our videos, you'll learn that I am a super, super planner. And I said to Julie before we left, I said, hey, we'll just grab an Uber. It's just the two of us. We don't have the kids with us. Um, you know, how we cruise, we cruise with kids. We cruise with lots of plans. And this was a test sailing. So this was different for us. So we said, you know what, we'll just grab an Uber. And... Um, so, Uber does not pick you up at the port, by Uber the way. Uber does not pick you up at the port. They're not allowed in the port. So if you want to get an Uber, you actually have to go across, across the street. Across the street. Um, pro tip. Which pro we, tip. we learned street. that like after we tried to get an Uber. So we tried to not get Not a big deal. So we tried to get a lift. And uh, that was showing it's not available. But, now, granted, we did wake up early. When we woke up early in the morning, I did check the app. And saw what the estimated price would be, which was a little bit higher than I expected. But I figured that's okay. It's not a problem. Uh, but once we got off the ship, we learned that there was none available. Now, we had previously decided not to book a group shuttle uh, because of the price. Um, and we decided, yeah, we can do better with an Uber. Um, so, do you want to give them some numbers? I mean, you're throwing out numbers. Yeah. So, uh, what we're we learned like, is... Ballpark. Like so ballpark about. so ballpark what we learned is that to get from uh the port to hobby airport you're going to pay about 75 to 85 dollars for an uber uh uber or lyft and to get to Without surge pricing to get to uh bush it's going to be upwards of 90 to 100 dollars for that for that uber or lyft um the ride share i'm sorry not the ride share the shuttle pricing you can get either through Royal Caribbean or through uh, Galveston Express or, or, or several other uh, options for $65 per person round trip to Hobby or between, I think it was 75 or 85 per person round trip to Bush. Uh, those shuttles, you book in advance. Um, and the shuttles were not running, I believe for the test sailing because cruising is just coming back they're, they're, and that wasn't all up and going. Right. Well, they're so running we, we, were, we really were reliant on taxi, Uber, or Lyft. So we decided, so we saw three taxis lined up and we said, you know, we're going to abandon this Uber Lyft plan. We're going to go grab a taxi. So we go went and jumped out at the Fortunately, taxi. Fortunately, we were second in We life. jumped out at the taxi stand and uh, watched the last taxi pull away. Literally. Like, we watched Literally the people watched get the inside people. from me to you right now. And, and, and we, so we, we waited for the next. Right. We're like, it's got to be right around the corner. So we called the taxi. And we waited. And we, and waited. we, waited. And we waited. And we waited. And panicked. And waited and panicked. And waited and And panicked. the line grew behind us to mm -hmm. about 30 people. Right. So we eventually uh, had a taxi show up and uh, cost us a little bit more than expected uh, taxi ride from. It wasn't too bad. It really wasn't that that different. I don't think it was either one of you. Um, it wasn't that bad. Um, but thank God we got a ride because right. we, like, literally so, I, I called home and said to my parents, we were watching the kids. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing everything we can to get to the airport, but we might not make our flight. Um, Which they believe. <laughs> but anyway, so the, the point of that is that we found out that from the taxi company that because it was a test sailing, 
for some reason it was not on the taxi company's radar that a ship was coming into port that they day. They had no so, idea. They said the taxis, I guess, have a schedule of knowing what ships are coming in or not or whatever. And the Liberty of the Seas was not on the schedule for coming in that day, which is why the taxis were not available or in the area because they had no idea that a ship was coming in that area. So I'm yeah, that's the information we received. Take it, leave it, you know, for what it's worth. That's the information we have. So I'm hopeful that all of you that are watching this video that you have uh, better luck than we did and that the uh, terminal knows that your ship is coming I did in say and that the taxis know and the Ubers know and the Lyfts know. I did say when uh, we were sitting there waiting, I, I said, you know what, lesson learned. Never, ever, ever leave without the plan for your full plans. Know your ride there. Know your ride back. Oh, stop. Don't look at me that way. I know he's the planner. And he's the, you're, you know what's funny it's is, yeah, it's you're you're fault. the planner, and I'm the one that's like, oh, we'll be fine. And fault. on this one, it's my fault. On this one, it's my fault. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We, it's my fault. It's, it's, your was. Fault. it's my fault. It's my fault. Um, we had a great time. We made it back. It made memories. We're good. Um, <laughs> hopefully, our story could just give you a piece of uh, advice and a peace of mind as to how to plan your trip. Yeah. But, uh, but all told, uh, good, good uh, four nights out of Galveston on uh, Liberty Test Sailing. Um, all the hiccups that we encountered. Um, we hope that uh, Royal Caribbean is able to fix them because uh, I don't think anything was major. Like, I think it's, all, it's all stuff that... We like, had a great time. We did. Um, that said... Um, I low mean, capacity... Yeah. There wasn't a lot of people, so the energy was a low. But overall, it was a great, great cruise. It was, it was great, and, and we started this channel um, primarily, uh, you know, to tell you how we cruise because you know most of the time we're we're toting our, our three little ones with us, and uh, we're we're cruising with kids, and this was an opportunity for Julie and I to just to get off on a cruise without the kids and. Um, you know, we do you, do you think that we're ready for us? Like, no. do you think that we're like, I mean, the, I, I do not. I'm sorry, do you think the Liberty of the Seas was ready for us? I do not. I do not think the Liberty of the Seas was prepared, and I don't know if that was due to the previous dry dock. I don't know if it was due to quarantine. I don't know if it was due to training. Okay. Um, but, we, ways but, Sunday, we've been, but... but we've been, I mean, we've been trying to dig into it, and you know, um. From the things that we've heard, the other test sailings went really, really, really well. And, um, you know, again, we said we were part of the uh, Oasis of Seas Facebook group for the te their test sailing, and we, we dropped some videos in there. Uh, we actually went down to the port and saw Oasis in Bayonne before she left. Uh, that was really cool. Um, yeah. But we learned uh, through, through some of the people that we met through that group um, that a lot of the things that we experienced, you know, especially with the... Uh, you know, the sail away and, and being greeted on the ship. Those were things that happened on that sailing that didn't happen on the Liberty sailing. And, um, you know, we did see some video from, from the first revenue sailing and it looks like they did greet everyone when they came on board. So, so that, <laughs> that's a plus. At, but, I look at uh, it this way. I, I, when I think about our sailing, I try to think, and we've talked about this, but I, I try to, I think like, what was, as this is a test sailing, what actually, once they go back to revenue, because, you know, I, I'm going to be completely and totally candid, completely and totally honest. Um, as a free test sailing, this was awesome. It was so cool to be a part of this process. I am forever grateful to Royal Caribbean for oh, affording us the opportunity um, to, to be a part of the sweepstakes and win this free mm -hmm. test sailing. Um, to be a part of this and to give our feedback. And I hope that it is constructive criticism yeah. and accepted and, and valued. Um, I really hope that it's valued. I hope that it's listened to. I, I think that they will because I really, really like them as a company. Um, that said, had I paid for this test cruise, I definitely would have been upset about a number of things. Because if I had paid for it, I mean, we're just talking about things like, you know, the entertainment wasn't ready and, you know, I, I think this, the food was 50-50. I think some of it was over, 
the top amazing and the other half of it was subpar yeah. um I, I little things like we had a problems with like you know when we got on the ship there was still maintenance out on the the balconies that were going that was going on and we felt a little funny when we walked out there and you know the smoke alarm thing on our ceiling yeah. was was not right i mean it was I, I assume it was working i hope it was working but like it was like the cover was coming off little 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 things that if this was a paid revenue sailing i i would have been more upset um knowing that they were just coming back knowing that they had just been you know off for 19 months and knowing that they had just been dry docked all of that said um you know great job guys also absolutely 100 percent, a million percent the crew phenomenal i cannot say enough about our uh you know our cabin steward or our room steward um the servers, the bartenders the servers bartenders. yeah like they were just all so awesome they were so happy to be able to be back at work we were so happy to be with them um so any of the issues that we did have the little things the crew uh, made I, up for. I, yeah the crew made up for and, it, definitely we definitely they supported they supported we, we were so them. happy to see them and they were so happy to see us we actually made a whole nother video just about the crew um it was actually Julie's number one priority when we first got back. We it wanted was. we wanted to give you guys this, um, but we were so excited for the crew. Um, a lot of them hadn't seen their families in a long time. We wanted to drop a video so that way they could say something to the YouTube community, to their families, to their friends. So we made sure we got that video up first, and uh, we'll make sure we drop a link to that so that way you can see that. Check out, check that out. And if you um, are on Liberty to see, is if you do see any of these guys. That, that are in our video or, you know, you mentioned them, um, you send know, them our love. send them our love. We love them all. The crew really, really was phenomenal. They did a great job and uh, yeah, kudos to them. All right. So Liberty to Seas Test Cruise, the only, only port of call that we got to stop in uh, was Cozumel. So for anybody who's ever been to Cozumel before, uh, you're familiar with all the shops you're familiar with the fact that they can handle several ships in port on one day. Uh, we pulled into port on a Sunday, and the Liberty of the Seas was the only ship in port that day. Um, most of the time, we wake up in the morning and we're already docked in a port. We were we woke up that morning, we were still docking. Uh, so Wait, we actually you got see the video. See, no, it's pretty uh, cool. We'll drop we'll drop a link at the end of this video. Wait until you see the video of us walking off the ship, it's a ghost town. So we, we, again, we like to be off the ship early, especially when we're going into port somewhere. Um, we did book the, the all-inclusive package at Mr. Sancho's. Uh, we know that there's uh, about three or four uh, different beach clubs, or actually several in, in Cozumel that, that people like. Um, and, you know, we looked into all of them and we just thought that uh, for us, uh, going to Mr. Sancho's would be the most fun, and, and we have a lot of video of that. And I know Julie was working on uh, getting that up there for you earlier today. So, um, but uh, to walk through the Port of Cozumel, um, used to seeing a lot of people, and I think we were the first or second people off the ship, and yeah. it was it was there was nobody there. Um, which I've never seen before. It was, it was weird, um, eerie, surreal. Um, yeah. But we walked through that entire port and... Uh, There's a photographer that takes pictures of, like, things that are abandoned. And that's what it reminded me of. I, I, it reminded me of walking through an area that had been abandoned. So, points points to remember? To Not remember. when we came back. Just when we got off the ship. It was a little bit more lively later on. So, don't get me wrong. Like, please, mm -hmm. please, <laughs> go and and go to Cosmo and it's awesome and and, and yeah. it'll be back but like because we were the only ship and we got off early it was just our timing yeah so walking through uh the port of Cosmo I've never seen it that empty I mean even the uh we we, we forgot sunscreen or not forgot we just figured we'd be able to get it there and the uh the little drugstore wasn't even open yeah yet, we didn't so. forget sunscreen we had sunscreen we didn't have a ton of it and I was worried that we would need more because you know 
Jersey Sun is not that strong in September. Um, and nothing was open yet that we no. could even get it yet. So, so but yeah, um, taxi stand, super easy. Uh, they have all the prices listed. I think we have a video uh, of all the prices listed uh, as to how to get to each thing. So we'll see if we can drop that uh, uh, somewhere. Um, but we chose uh, Mr. Sancho's, which was a $17 cab ride. We met some new friends from our sailing and we shared a cab ride with them down to Mr. Sancho's. Can't um, wait to show you the review of Mr. Sancho's and our time there. We met some really awesome people. Mm -hmm. and, Shout uh, out to Sandy. <laughs> hey, Sandy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, great time, Mr. Sancho's. And then uh, they're, uh, they're, you know, a lot of their business is cruise ship based. So they were very, uh, uh, very aware of the fact that uh, we needed to get back to the ship and they made sure that we made it back in time uh, to board the ship. Uh, no issues uh, getting back through the port, um, through the terminal rather, on, yeah. on back on the ship. and uh, Came uh, back, came through, shops were open, got to talk to... Now the one thing, if you're, and... if you're a regular cruiser, one thing that you're used to seeing is the pier runner. <laughs> and I was really... Not that I want to see anybody miss a ship, but I really enjoy standing up on the top deck and watching somebody run down the pier. And I didn't, I didn't get I don't to enjoy see. that, but you no, know, I don't, I don't enjoy it. No, not at all. <laughs> there, there is part of you. Just you know, if you if you're gonna cruise, if you're a past yeah. cruiser, if you're a future <laughs> cruiser, if you've never cruised before, don't miss the ship time. And make sure you set your watch to ship time because, uh, yeah, that's important. Um, <laughs> and if you're not going to set your watch to ship time, make sure you buy cruise insurance. <laughs> so we, we didn't see any pier runners. Though. No, no pier runners this time. So there was, um, there was people watching for them. Yeah, no, we were all up there together. We were watching for them. And then we realized we were all standing next to each other. So uh, um, we all made it. So <laughs> good job by us. So, uh, but yeah, Cosmo was a great day. And then, uh, you know, back out to the pool um, where we met a lot more friends. So um, good stuff there. All right. So all told, the, the crew was great. Um, great time to get away. Super happy to be involved with this process of returning to sailing, getting everybody back on the seas, getting everybody back on the water. It was awesome to be back on a cruise ship. Um, even with all the restrictions and regulations and protocols, I do feel like um, everybody on board, the crew, the passengers, um, those that have cruised before, even a bunch of those that hadn't cruised before, kind of were all on board with, <laughs> all on board, sorry, bad joke, um, all on board with, you know, let's get back to sailing. Let's, let's do this. This is, this is just where we need to be. And, um, you know, we're glad that we were able to share this with you. We hope that the videos that we were able to share were, were, were uh, useful to you. And, um, you know, this is a new channel. And, and we're already seeing some support. So we want to say thank you to everybody that's been watching hey, the videos, commenting, I... liking, subscribing. And if you haven't done that yet, click that like button. Click that subscribe button and turn on that notification can bell I so you say, don't miss any more of our any more videos coming up. I, I hope that we can provide you content. We do have some other cruises coming up. We have more than one coming up mm -hmm. within the next year or so. And, and I'll tell you um, what, um, you know, part of this part of this whole channel is just we want to know how you cruise. This is how we cruise. Um, drop a comment. Let us know. Ask us questions. Tell us what you want to see. Tell us what your questions are. I, I you know, but at the same time, like if we can provide any kind yeah. of feedback to you at all, we enjoy doing it. This is fun for us. Yeah. And we can't wait to get the kids involved. This is, this is part of, part of this whole thing was uh, yeah. our three kids really wanted to be involved in this process. It's all because of them. It, yeah, it is. It's only so because of them. it is. And, and now we have shirts. So, um, yeah. So if you want a shirt, let us know, uh, drop a comment um like subscribe you know and uh we can't wait to show you the content from the kids you know maybe i said it before and and i think it's just going to be hilarious when we actually oh, get them on so board excited. we're just going to strap a gopro to their head and just let them run around the ship i think that's going to be the best content we could possibly show anybody it's i'm nervous be, 
Um, nervously, uh, nervously excited. Sure. <laughs> what he said. So, but anyway, <laughs> hey, thanks for checking out this video. Uh, again, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Uh, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of the uh, upcoming videos coming out of this. And we'll see you on the seas. See you on the seas.